So, um, John L., uh, designated report behind the lens back here for episode two of um, designated report behind the lens. Um, I'm here with Mike Cahill. How you doing, man? Good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, kind of before we jump into everything, how are you holding up with all the crazy? Um, getting by, you know, I can't really complain too much, um, compared to a lot of other people right now. So trying to stay positive, trying to stay safe. I hear you. I hear you. And you, you said you're in New Jersey right now, right? Yep. I'm quarantined with my family in Florham Park. Gotcha. Gotcha. And are you, um, are you originally from Jersey? Yep. Yeah. I grew up in Florham Park. Um, I just moved across town really. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm up here in Connecticut, so I'm not I'm not too far from you. Yeah. Um, but uh, same thing, just kind of take it day by day, maintain, try and you know, everybody's kind of dealing with the same thing. So yep, we're all on this together. Exactly, exactly. Um, so tell me tell me about yourself. I know you're a photographer. Um, I know you just graduated from Marist. Um, what else? What 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 brought you here today? Um, so I started shooting. I think it was my sophomore year at Marist. Um, I got hired at Marist Athletics as a freshman, but I started shooting a lot as a sophomore, and that's when it became my main role. Mm -hmm. And you know, I do a whole bunch of different sports and promotional events and all that stuff. Gotcha. And when so you started shooting at Marist your sophomore year. When did you just start mm -hmm. photography in general? So I took some like basic photography classes in high school, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have anything to shoot consistently until I got hired at Marist. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it, it had always been kind of a passion of yours and it wasn't until Marist you were able to utilize it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really have anything to shoot consistently, but I always enjoyed it. I was always kind of decent at it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and right now, you, you just graduated, right? Yep, just graduated in May with a degree in sports communication. Okay. Are you um, are you looking to do something with your degree, or, or is photography more the passion? Photography is definitely the passion, but I also enjoy journalism and social media. So I'm looking for jobs that would kind of combine those three things. And yeah. if I can't find a job with the current job market, I'm looking at grad schools, too. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, it's tough. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. <laughs> um, yeah, Designated Report, it was started by um, one of my good friends from from uh, middle school and high school. And um, he went to school. He's actually a teacher right now, um, but he's looking to get into journalism as well. And um, that's kind of where Designated Report was born. And um, you know, we're slowly but surely growing and expanding. So um, I hear you. It, it's tough trying to gain. Let training. me know if you have an opening. Yeah, <laughs> I'll definitely relay it on. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just tough because there's so many different outlets. Uh, there's so many, you know, so many people kind of vying for the same, you know, things. Yeah, essentially. Very competitive. Yeah, it's um, I don't want to say it's oversaturated. Because uh, if you're good at what you do and if you're you present it in a unique way, I think people will consume it. Um, but it's tough. It's it's tough, you know. Yep. Um, so, like you said, I know you shoot a bunch of um, you shoot a lot of different sports. I saw on your social media football, basketball. Uh, I think I saw baseball or softball or both of them. Both. Uh, yep. Uh, do you have a preference? Do you have a favorite? It's tough because, you know, I'm just a sports guy. I love so many sports, but mm -hmm. I think probably basketball is my favorite to shoot just because you can be so close to the action and you can shoot the whole floor from one spot. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, did, did you play sports growing up or in yep, I played, um, baseball, basketball and tennis. And at Marist, I played intramural volleyball. Okay, okay. So does the fact that you were um, 
that you did play sports and you kind of have an understanding of, um, you know, placement where you need to be, you know, kind of anticipating moments. Does that help you when it comes to, to shooting? Yeah, I think it's definitely an advantage um, just to know, like, you don't know, need to know every every line of the rule book, but just to know essentially what's going on, where to be, definitely yeah. helps. Yeah. I, um, a few years ago, I, I, I take some photos here and there, um, but a few years ago, my friend was a, she was the head coach of the, um, the girls lacrosse team at, at our high school. And, um, I didn't know anything about lacrosse, didn't know the rules, didn't know anything like that. Um, but I shot them for two years, two seasons. And, um, it was a really cool experience. Just, I learned the rules, A, which was, which was definitely helpful. Um, but, uh, I started to build a relationship with some of the players and, um, in those moments, you you know, they'll kind of find you and they'll give you a look or a smile or whatever. And um, had, have you experienced any of that in, in shooting so many games, you start to build a relationship? Yep, I know so many of the athletes at Marist because, you know, I work with so many sports and then, you know, I see them in class or in the dining hall or wherever because Marist is a pretty small school. Yeah. So, you know, I know a lot of people, they ask me for pictures all the time <laughs> and I wish I could send them to them, but the NCAA has those media rules that don't allow me to. So, you know, they know it's not me. I would do it if I could, but yeah. I have to say no, unfortunately. Yeah, you don't want to get anybody in trouble. Right. <laughs> or myself. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> so, since you're working for the athletic department, Every photo that you take at the games, it goes to, it, it's like the property of the school. How does that work? Yeah, so I send them to uh, the sports inf information director for that sport, mm -hmm. and then they use them for graphics or social media or whatever else they need them for. Okay. So do you get do you get compensated for any of this or is it like in, an internship? I had a work study as part of my financial aid package, so I did get paid for it. Okay. And then at Army, uh, that was an internship, so I got internship credit for it. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. How long were you shooting at, uh, at Army? And how did you so, get I did my internship in the fall semester of my senior year. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring semester, for the half of it that I had, um, I freelanced for them. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um... I know you've been primarily Marist. Um, how much did you get to shoot at Army? Um, what did you shoot? Was it just sports? Were you able to shoot any other activities or events or anything like that? So in the fall, I did a little bit of shooting as part of my internship. Um, you know, a couple of soccer games, volleyball games. I did a football game and I did the Army Navy game in Philadelphia, which was awesome. I believe it. And then I did um, Army Navy men's basketball too. But uh, I didn't get to do any of the other stuff at West Point, but I think it'd be really cool to do that someday. Yeah, I, I agree, man. It's, <laughs> such a, it's such a storied, you know, program first and foremost. Yeah. And, and um, you know, like you said, the Army Navy, it's just, it, it's must see, must experience. I, I went to one right. team and it was something that I'll never, I'll never forget, you know? Yeah, there's no rivalry like it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so when you are, take me through your typical game day. So uh, you're showing up to a, a basketball game, a football game. Um, do you get there a little bit early? Um, do you have certain sections where you sit or, or stand? Um, what's your preparation look like on a, on a typical game day? So usually I'm asked to be there about an hour early. If it's a bigger event like football or basketball, then I try to get there even a little earlier than that. Um, first thing I do is go up to the press box or my seat on press row, set up my laptop, open up you know that team's Twitter account, open up the score graphic that I need, um, just set up everything that I'll need throughout the game. Mm -hmm. And then I take some pregame pictures and send them out and then just wait for game time. Do you, I know um, maybe not for, well, I know like professional sports games, 
football, basketball, whatever, um, occasionally you'll get photographs um, like in game, like on their Twitter or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that something that you did at Marist or like the program did where you were taking pictures and they were being live uploaded to a computer, to your computer or something? And they were yep. uploading it from there? Yeah, so usually during like a media timeout, I'll just put a few photos on my computer, edit them, and then put them on the Google Drive for that game. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, my supervisor can use them for the score graphics or just to upload them to Twitter or whatever. Gotcha, gotcha. So that process, how, how long does that process take? And is it something, like, is there an added pressure to be able to not only take the photos, but get them uploaded, get them edited, get them, you know, all these different steps in a, in a timely manner. The only pressure is at the end of a very close rivalry game. So like if you're at a basketball game and you know, you're winning by one or two and you get a big stop on defense, because then you have to get it up, get it edited, send it out like very quickly because it was like the last seconds of the game. But other than that, there's not really any pressure to it, like in the first half or anything. Okay, that that does make sense. That does. Yeah. Make sense. Um, so, did you, in terms of shooting, um, in terms of shooting these games, did you shoot every home game for every every sport? Not every game, but the vast majority of them. Because, you know, sometimes we have like baseball, softball, double headers on the same day at the same time. So I can't be everywhere. Gotcha. But I was doing probably four or five games a week okay. for the senior year. So if you're doing four or five games a week, um, do you go into a game saying, hey, you know, I have five seniors and I need to make sure I get photos of all of them? Or, um, you know, last game I was in, you know, I was on this particular baseline. Maybe this game I'll go to the opposite baseline. Or does that go into into your planning? Just kind of taking mental notes of photos that you have gotten, and then um, photos of what you would like to get. Yeah, I try to change it up every game. Um, you know, before the game, my bosses will tell me if they need pictures of somebody specific. Um, either because they're an underclassman and we just don't have anything of them or because there's a milestone coming up or whatever it is. So that it's always part of the game plan. And then I try to vary where I sit or stand depending on the sport every game too. Okay. Have you ever been, um, have you ever been tasked with shooting just a particular player? Um, like you said, if there's a milestone or something like that, say it's a, I don't know, a, thou a thousand points or something. Um, are you following that player while they march towards that milestone? I don't think I've ever shot just one player for the entire game or until a milestone happened. But like, if I know something's coming up, then I'll focus on them more than anybody else. But sense. I try to get a little bit of everybody too. Okay. Just in the post game, if we post pictures of just one player <laughs> on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, website, yeah. it, you know, need to vary it a little bit. Absolutely. Um, how many people are on your team? Um, you mean like my Marist Athletics team? Or, uh, or no, like the like your photography media team? So we had um, my supervisor is the social media coordinator, and then he has a couple of other interns who do either social media or photography or both. So it's probably five or six of us total. Oh, so it's a pretty small small crew. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I know um, one of my, not, I wouldn't call him a friend, but more of an acquaintance. This is some years back. Um, I'm a, I'm a Mariners fan, oddly enough, in Connecticut. But um, back when Ichiro was playing for, for the Mariners, um, like I said, an acquaintance, a friend of a friend is a photographer down in Baltimore. And um Ichiro had some milestone coming up and the, this guy was specifically tasked with taking photos of Ichiro the entire game. So again, with a smaller crew, I understand that you can't do that um, because like you said, you need to kind of 
encapsulate the entire game as well as some of the other players and things like that. Right. And the crowd and all that other stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, you mentioned that you do have players reaching out to you. They want to see pictures or, you know, yep. um, what's the, what's the protocol in terms of, um, if the social media manager posts a, a picture or something like that, uh, are they then allowed to download and use it or upload it to their Instagram or whatever the case is? Yep. So I or any of my supervisors at Marist Athletics or Army, we can't send them anything directly. But if we post something on social media or the website, they can screenshot it. Or if it's a video, they can screen record it and then do whatever they want with it. Okay. That that does make sense. I mean... Yeah. But that's uh, why I try to post a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have... um? Well, you, you said that you have relationships with some of these players. Um, do you get them coming to you after they've seen a, a photo posted to the to social media, to Instagram, to Twitter, or whatever the case is, and come back to you and say like, "Hey, Mike, that was a great shot," or you know, like, did you? Um, are there any more pictures? Like, can I expect to see myself someplace else or anything like that? Yeah, um, you know, since I know so many of them and, you know, I see them in classes or, you know, I run into them just around campus. Um, there's a lot of people who do that. And sometimes it's coaches or even family members or people in the crowd too. So it's really cool. What about, ha have you had um, a player or coach, whoever come up to you before game and say, hey, Mike, make sure you get a couple extra photos of me or anything like that? Yeah, actually at our senior night women's basketball game, one of the seniors came up to me and she said that after they had their team meeting, they were going to do layup lines, but they were going to try to touch the bottom of the backboard when they released the ball. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, she told me she was probably going to miss. And then, you know, I said, you know, just tonight. And, you know, I got, I got her missing like she asked me to, but... <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's been challenges like that issued before yeah <laughs> that's awesome um what do you what do you enjoy most about the entire process i think just being at the games shooting because even if i wasn't shooting i'd be at the games anyway because i'm just a sports guy and as a sports communication major you know i always had to you know write game stories or you know live tweet or whatever the assignment was yep. but um you know just shooting at the game you know trying to get the right shot at the right time the right person it's cool yeah yeah um have you been at a have you been in a big game a rivalry game a championship game or anything like that and um have you missed a shot like where something big happened and either you just hit the hit the button too late or you were focused someplace else um i've never missed the biggest moment of a game but you know there are times where you know autofocus gets you or something you miss something and yeah. it's annoying but you know, the nice thing about sports is that there's always another opportunity to get something like that. Absolutely. So, you know, if you miss the first one, you better get the second one. <laughs> and how many how many photos would you typically take in a game? So rough estimate, probably about a thousand photos per game. And I'll keep maybe two to three hundred of the good ones. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about yeah. right. Army, Navy, um, basketball, and football was definitely more. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Those were like full day events, you know, college game day and the locker room celebrations and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, again, I know when uh, when you and I spoke earlier in the week, um, that's one of my things. I feel like people don't really understand just the amount of work that actually goes into um not only the photos but the videography the, the social media uh if it's on tv the broadcast and right. um like you said you you might take a thousand pictures 
out of that thousand, you might like a couple hundred, and of that mm -hmm. couple hundred, you may only use fifty of them. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it's it's a process. Um, and, and editing it, too. It, exactly. Exactly. And um, kind of with that said, is there anything that you dislike about the whole process? Editing can be kind of a drag sometimes because, you know, it's time consuming and it's very repetitive. Mm -hmm. But it can also be rewarding because, you know, you have a picture that might not be great when you take it, but then after you crop it or brighten it up a little bit, it yeah. could be your best picture of the game. Yeah. So while it's annoying and time consuming, it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When, uh, like you said, once you get, once you get the image or the shot the way that you want it, it might be, you know, um, might be better than you expected when you were, right. than when you were, you were behind the camera. Um, do you have a favorite photo that you've taken thus far? That's a tough one to narrow it down to just one. Um, I think in the Army Navy game, um, you know, I was in the Navy locker room for their post game celebration. And when they were, you know, jumping around and singing and all that stuff, um, I was focused in on the trophy, mm -hmm. but you could see all of them, you know, celebrating in the background. And that was a really cool shot. That sounds really awesome. Um, that sounds really awesome. Is that, is that anywhere where we would be able to see? Yeah, it's definitely on my um, Instagram, and I think it's on my Twitter too, but I can send it to you if you want to put it on your website. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Sure. Um, um, I know you just graduated, so my assumption is you're like 21, 22, 23? 22. Okay. Um, do you have any role models, photography role models? I think somebody I definitely looked up to was um, Anthony Causey. You know, unfortunately, he passed away from the okay. coronavirus, but he was he was always just different than everybody else. And then, like in my personal life, um, Harrison Baker, he's now the graphic designer at Tulane University. Okay. Um, he spent a lot of time helping me get better at shooting, and he taught me the basics of editing too. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. So you you had kind of this mentor and you mm -hmm. said you also took some some basic photography classes right yeah um so in terms of i know i know one of the biggest things in um getting better especially especially with photography is just continuing to do it taking more photos editing more photos yeah. um have you seen a have you seen a growth from sophomore year to now in terms of the quality of your photos or um, you know the way you're composing photos, editing photos? Have you seen that growth in the last few years? Yeah, I definitely think so, um, especially with the sports that I didn't have a whole lot of experience with before. Because, you know, the more, like you said, the more you do it, the better you get at it, the more practice, the better you get at it. Mm -hmm. So you're just that constant repetition over the last three or four years has been awesome. Have you ever looked back at some of your old photos and been like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't very good? Yep. Yeah, there, <laughs> some, there are times where you just look back and shake your head and wonder what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, I, I, I dabbled around with photography. I used to, what got me into it was, um, I have younger brothers that play, twin brothers that play football. And, um, they, uh, my mom had an old um, Nikon camera and I would go to the games and I would take pictures. And um, it just, it kind of piqued my interest. And similar to you, I just took like a, a basic photography course and really learned how to use the camera. And um, same thing, I look at some of these old photos and I'm like, what in the world was I doing? Like this, <laughs> they're, <Yeah. laughs> just, they're just very flat. Um, you know, I didn't crop them or anything like that. Yeah, not zoomed um, in enough. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they're tough to look at sometimes, but um, same thing, I can I can see the growth. It, it's definitely measurable. Yep, yeah, the repetition is so important, especially, you know, you're trying to catch moving people or, or you know, a ball that's traveling 90 miles an hour or whatever it is. Yeah. 
So yeah. just practice makes perfect. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so what have you learned from photography? And this could be, um, this could be photography specific, uh, or it could be like a life lesson kind of, uh, you know, using photography as a microcosm. Um, have you learned anything? I think the big thing is just work hard for something that you want. Cause like, you know, I was decent at photography. I knew the basics of how to use a camera, but mm -hmm. like I never shot on manual mode or, you know, I didn't know how to zoom in enough and track people moving or anything like that. But you know, the more you work at it, the better you get at it. So I think that's an important photography lesson, but also life lesson. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree. Um, so when you got hired at, um, by the athletic department, um, how did that happen? Was it you went to them and said, hey, this is something that I'm interested in? Um, or did you go in with like a portfolio or photos or how did, how did that work and how did you get hired? So that story actually starts my senior year of high school. Um, I took a sports management class as an elective and my teacher told me about his job working at uh, his athletic department when he went to college. And it sounded interesting to me. So I emailed um, Mike Ferraro, who's the head SID at Marist Athletics, when I was a senior in high school in like, in like October. Yeah. So, um, you know, we had a brief conversation and then I reached out again when I moved in uh, to Marist in August. And, you know, I interviewed on the Monday of the first week of freshman year. He hired me on Tuesday and I worked my first volleyball game on Wednesday. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. so um, you getting hired, was it in large part due to the relationship and, and you reaching out prior to actually getting to Marist? Or um, did you go in just kind of clean slate, like this is what I want to do? It was kind of a mixture of both. Cause like I didn't have like a photography portfolio or anything at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just expressed that I was interested and that I knew the basics of several sports and also that I had my work study. Cause if you don't have a work study, you have to wait until you're internship eligible, which is junior okay. year. So like that kind of opened the door for that whole situation to happen. Okay. That, that does make sense. So um, I'm assuming you had, you did have a camera and you just kind of work with what you had? So at first I was actually using the camera that Marist Athletics had when nobody else was using it. Gotcha. Um, I think it was my birthday sophomore year, I got my own camera. And then I actually just bought another camera like two weeks ago. Nice, what'd you buy? I got a Nikon D7500 with a 200 to 500 millimeter lens. Nice, nice. Yeah, <laughs> big one. Um, Gee, yeah, yeah. Um, I wish I had sports to use it for. <laughs> that's very true. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully soon, man. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm over COVID. I know a lot of people are, but yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll have something to, to watch, to shoot. Yeah, something. absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> so do you have any tips for... Um, anybody, um, whether it's somebody, you know, a freshman or a senior in high school, looking to get into, um, you know, what you're doing, whether it's photography, videography, uh, social media management. Um, do you have any tips in terms of um, how to get there or, you know, anything like that? Um, well, I think the first thing is just, you know, express interest and show that you're passionate about it because that alone will open up doors for you. Mm -hmm. But for photography specifically, um, I don't know how many photographers do this, but I try to keep both eyes open. Um, you know, I'm tracking, you know, somebody through the viewfinder with one eye, but if I keep the other eye open, I can see what's going on on the other side of the floor too. Hmm. So I don't know how many people do that, but that's a trick that yeah. works really well for me. So when you're shooting, do you shoot, if you're looking through the viewfinder, you look with your right eye? Yeah, right eye in the left. viewfinder, and then left eye is looking at whatever else is going on. 
That's why I've never, I don't think I've met anybody that's done that before. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that something that you just kind of developed on your own or is that something that you got kind of coached into? I just did it one day because I think I was at a basketball game and I was following somebody with the ball in the paint and then somebody got open on the arc and shot a three and I missed it because I had no idea that person was open. Yeah. So I just opened my other eye and I started doing it because it worked. That's crazy. I'm, I'm absolutely going to try that now. <laughs> I've, I've it works. Heard of it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to try that out. Um, so what are your, I know you, I know you kind of want to encompass everything photography, uh, journalism, the whole nine. Um, yeah. What's your ultimate goal? Do you want to work for somebody? Do you want to start your own business? Um, what, what, what do you want to do ultimately? I'm open to a lot of different ideas, but I think I want to stay in one place for a while, whether that be a pro team, a college team, maybe a newspaper that covers like a lot of different sports. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you know, one of the cool things is developing those relationships with athletes, coaches, you know, whoever it may be. Yep. So you know, I like the idea of staying in one place for a while. And that that's awesome. And it's interesting because you, you are, you are the second interview that I've done. Um, but both of you have said the same thing that building the relationships with the players, the coaches, um, it's important because, um, you know, while anybody can go to, if you, if you know how to use a camera, anybody can go to a game and shoot photos and get good, get good shots of the game. Um, but when you've built a relationship with, with the players, um, it seems like their personalities start to come out a little bit more. They're willing yeah. to give you a little more in turn, you know, maybe they'll let you, um, get a little bit closer you know, or like, you know, uh, it, it kind of opens the door for more unique shots, maybe. Um, yeah. And maybe you wouldn't get if they, if they weren't comfortable with you. Yeah. And, you know, when you know the players, you know, they look for you sometimes even during the game. Like, you know, I know when I'm shooting a women's basketball game, um, Juliana Bonilla is going to be the one looking at me jumping up and down on the bench. <laughs> you know, like, I don't think I have a picture of her where she's not looking directly at me. <laughs> So, and, you know, other people do that too. Uh, a lacrosse player told me in the middle of a game, he was on the field, that he was going to post one of my pictures after the game. <laughs> so, you know, when you know people, crazy stuff happens. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, if you could, if you could shoot anybody, uh, dead or alive, um, sports or otherwise, who would it be? Oof. That's a tough one. Um, I grew up a Mets fan, idolizing David Wright. Okay. So I'm going to go with him. Okay. And yeah. would, when you say David Wright, would it be, again, this could be at any time, would it be while he's playing? Or do you think you would want to shoot him like now? Um, what, what, what's your thoughts on that? I think it'd be interesting to do now, but I'll go with when he was playing because, you know, he was one of the best players in baseball for several years before he got hurt. But, you know, it would be cool to see what he's up to now. You know, I know he's coaching. I think one of his daughters plays softball or baseball. Um, you know, I don't really know much else about what's going on in his life right now. So it would be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's it's unfortunate. He, he got derailed uh, with the yeah. injuries. I mean... The Met, the Mets were good for a while. I mean, as, as yeah. <laughs> you know, we had our chances. Just oh, you know, the Wilpons didn't spend any money, so we never got better, and that was that. I'm I'm a pseudo Mets fan. Um, just being so close to City Field, um, mm -hmm. we used to go. I mean, this is the first year in a while that we haven't gone, but usually a group of us we go at least once a summer. Um, but um, you know, I I feel like. I feel like baseball is better when the Mets and the Yankees are good. Um, right. So there's that little crosstown rivalry. Exactly. And, you know, the Subway series are awesome. Exactly, exactly. 
but you definitely do have, uh, you, you, you guys definitely did have your chance, unfortunately. I was actually just um, researching. I just finished a story not too long ago. I just, I just posted it yesterday, I believe, uh, about the designated hitter. Because, you know, with uh, the shortened season, they're moving to the, the Big universe. Big of that. Are you really? I hate watching pitchers strike out. Oh, my gosh. It drives me crazy. <laughs> You have bases loaded, and you have the nine hitter pitcher up striking out. Come on, I'm, I'm the exact opposite. I love, I love the strategy that goes along with with the DH, <laughs> or not having I the mean, DH, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, get personally, I'd rather have Noah Syndergaard, or I'd rather have Nelson Cruz hitting over Noah Syndergaard, but that's I, just me. I, I, I get it. I do get 30 it. homers, 100 RBIs. <laughs> I, I, I got a lot. 180 batting average. <laughs> I had a lot of people yelling at me the last couple of days, and I get it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's – we'll see. I, I'm excited for, for baseball. I'm hoping um, – and, and basketball and, you know, hopefully football and college football and everything, you know, kind of kind of works out. Um, I know we're seeing spikes in the COVID again. So, yeah, who knows? Crazy. Who knows? But hope, you know, fingers crossed, you know, we'll, we'll have something to, to consume in the next few months. Yeah. I'm going crazy without sports. So. <laughs> I believe <laughs> I've been playing MLB the show a lot. So have I actually. Um, so I think that's all I had for you. Um, I'm gonna open it up to you. I mean, I wanna make sure we plug your, your Twitter, your Instagram. Um, I believe you have a website as well. Uh, yep. So the floor is yours. So my Instagram is Mike Cahill and the number five. My Twitter is Cahill, the number three, and Michael, because somebody took my Cahill five before <laughs> I could. Of course. And I don't know my website's full URL off the top of my head, but I'll send you the link and you can post it with I'll, I'll definitely else. post it, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, hopefully we can get some eyes on this. Hopefully we can get, um, um, you know, your resume and your work out there. and, and <laughs> Hire <yeah>. me. <laughs> You, you know how perfect would that be we're we're in the middle of a, a pandemic and quarantine and the whole nine we get you hired and then once the seasons kick off you you're right on the sidelines taking photos getting paid that's the dream that that's ideal that's <laughs> what we're looking to do yeah. um but yeah i think that's it man i i truly appreciate you taking some time um you know, I'm, I hope that, uh, again, I'm, I'm hoping things kind of open up and we can get back to a little bit of normalcy. Um, but uh, I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. You know, this is a really cool idea. Um, I enjoyed listening to Scott last week and hopefully there'll be many more of these episodes. I appreciate it, man. All right. So I'll talk, I'm sure we'll be in touch. But uh, again, I appreciate it. Be safe. Be well. You and the family, and, and yeah, we'll talk. Same for you. Appreciate it.